Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Heather Cayley, who asked me to review Tokyo Gore Police. All right, with a name like that, how can I refuse? It sounds like it was practically made for this show. Cult movie fans might be aware that since the 2000s, there's been something of a golden age for extreme, low-budget Japanese splatter movies. These movies typically emphasize two things, extreme gore and comically ridiculous storylines. You had Machine Girl, Robo Geisha, Mutant Girl Squad, Gothic and Lolita Psycho, Vampire Girl vs. Frankenstein Girl, and Hell Driver, to name just a few. But Tokyo Gore Police from 2008 is arguably the poster child for the entire genre. I mean, just look at the title. It sounds like the name of a fake Japanese horror movie I'd say is a joke. But nope, it's real. Even if watching it might make you wonder if you're just hallucinating the whole thing. This one comes to us from director Yoshihiro Nishimura, who also worked on some of the other movies I just mentioned, as well as directing segments for Western anthology films like The ABCs of Death and The Profane Exhibit. What I'm trying to say is that I've done a lot of weird movies on this show, but this one is one of the weirdest for sure. In addition to Tokyo Shock, the movie's brought to us by Fever Dreams, which might be the most accurate production company name ever. Oh, well, this seems pleasant so far. We got flowers blooming, kids playing. This looks like it's gonna be a delightful, lighthearted romp. Okay, guess not. So the premise of the movie is it's the future, uh, I think think? They never really say, but I'm assuming it's the future. And the Tokyo police force has been privatized and now consists of a bunch of samurai cops. Which reminds me, I really gotta do samurai cop one of these days. By the looks of it, they're after a fugitive who committed the crime of thinking he could pull off those dreadlocks. Oh, and I guess he also killed some people. Damn, things are about to get intense. <laughs> And then a sexy flight attendant shows up? Turns out I was wrong. The cops are actually here to arrest this guy for speeding up the film and infringing on Leatherface's copyright. Whoa, did I say arrest? I meant kill the shit out of him. All right, fellas, you can stop now. I think you got him. Oops, my mistake. He was smuggling another chainsaw behind his other one. And check out his moves. Get over here! Yeah, get used to the Mortal Kombat references, cause this is like if someone made a movie entirely out of fatalities. And I got even more video game references. Just look at this. Hey, looks like somebody's been playing some Team Fortress. Here's our main character, Ruka, who knows that if you want to beat a freak like this, you gotta fight fire with fire. Or in this case, splatter with splatter. Jesus, look at all this blood spraying around. This is like if Quentin Tarantino or Robert Rodriguez made an itchy and scratchy cartoon. And since I already started with the Mortal Kombat references, fuck it, might as well do this. Ruka wins. Fatality. Alright, I am not gonna do that after every gore scene in this movie, because if I did, this video would be about three hours long. So in addition to the privatized police force, there's also a new breed of genetically modified super criminals called engineers who are able to grow biological weapons from any injury. And the only way to kill them is to sever a key-shaped tumor from their bodies. In other words, this movie's gonna be gory as shit. Ruka is a hunter assigned to kill engineers, mainly because the police are busy with other crimes. Turns out wearing tidy whities is a capital offense in Japan. And did somebody say police montage? Tokyo, my city. It's my job to clean up the scum that infests these streets, and a production assistant's job to clean up the much bigger mess I leave behind doing that. Also, why the fuck am I talking with a New York accent if I'm Japanese? Don't make no sense. Well, Ruka's still gotta get through this movie, so might as well start getting hammered now. Oh, one other thing. In addition to the samurai cop uniforms, the little pagoda cars the cops drive are a nice touch, too. Jeez, 15 minutes in and already this movie is full of freaks. Who let the gimp out, and more importantly, who gimped him? Hey, I actually understood that Japanese. 
Happy birthday, Ruka. To celebrate, we're gonna have some cake and then play Pin the Limb on the Freak. All right, this movie's been pretty weird so far, but you know what it could really use? Uh, actually, I wasn't gonna say that, but sure. All right, pal, make it quick. Do you have any idea how in demand schoolgirl prostitutes are in this society? I don't know who this is, but they better hurry up and get back to school. She's gonna be late for Upskirt Shots 101. Now, you may be wondering, is this movie just gonna be the cops slicing up mutants? Well... Okay, yeah, that is pretty much the whole movie, but it does introduce a central villain, and this guy has a very particular M.O. that involves, you guessed it, lots of gore. <laughs> the horrible secret behind Japanese blood drives finally revealed. Besides all the bloodletting, we also get a bunch of RoboCop-style satirical commercials sprinkled throughout. This one is a PSA asking people not to commit ritualistic suicide. In fact, considering the movie deals with a futuristic privatized police force, this whole movie is like RoboCop if it was directed by David Cronenberg and produced by Lloyd Kaufman. Not that I'm saying that like it's a bad thing, mind you. Anyway, because the woman who got her blood drained ran a prostitution ring, Ruka decides to go undercover as a hooker to try and catch the killer. Not sure why she needed to change her outfit, though. Her uniform was already pretty fetishy as it is. But before we get to that, how about another commercial? I think the weirdest thing about this wrist-cutting knife ad is that it could probably pass for a real commercial in Japan. <laughs> Anyway, Ruka doesn't find the killer, but if you think the cops have been harsh so far, just wait until you see the penalty for getting handsy. <laughs> this guy really shouldn't be surprised by this. Just look at what happened to her last boyfriend. As over the top as the blood in this movie is, I think the most unbelievable part is a subway in Tokyo being this empty. A flashback also tells us the guy whose head exploded at the beginning was Ruka's father, and... Oh my god, it's the Godzilla Ninja! Don't do it, I swear I'll make another video! And wait a second, I think the only other guy in the train might be the killer she's looking for. Good thing Ruka didn't take a cab home. Even though this movie obviously had a low budget and was filmed in just two weeks, it does still manage to be kinda creative with the locations and lighting. I've seen higher budgeted movies that look more plain than this. Looks like Ruka's found the killer, who is... uh... Alan Rickman from Harry Potter? And I will give you one guess as to where this scene is going. That's right, more blood. Jesus, was this movie sponsored by Kool-Aid? I think the money for red food coloring must have taken up half the budget. So whereas the first guy grew a chainsaw arm, this guy gets... uh, gun eyes? And if you think I'm kidding... Nope, his eyes actually shoot shit. This guy is called the Key Man, who infects Ruka with a key tumor to turn her into an engineer. Well, on the bright side, maybe next time Ruka goes on a cutting spree, she'll grow some weapons now. And speaking of weapons... <laughs> Whoa, 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 hang on a second there, pal. I know better than to buy swords off the TV. And the nice thing about these practice katanas... Oh! Oh, that hurt! Oh, that hurt big time. Using a piece of his scalp, they identify the key man, who apparently died at the age of 24. Okay, that's a pretty rough-looking 24. The actor looks like he's in his 40s, probably because he was. Also, he might have been the guy who shot Ruka's father. But you know what? None of these plot revelations are important. What is important is that we show more commercials. <laughs> Damn, early prototypes for the Wii U were dark. I can see why Nintendo concentrated on the Switch. Ruka goes looking for the key man. I don't know if he's here, but I think whoever was might have had gonorrhea. Well, who knows? Maybe it's this guy. Oh, 
Oh shit, it's even worse than I thought. The guy's a raging bick junkie. The great thing about all these satirical commercials is that some of them actually censor the movie for me. And if you're wondering what this one's for, it's to recruit kids for the police. Hashtag back the Gru. All right, so far this movie's leaned pretty hard on the violence, so to balance it out, I think we need some sex. And we get just that when a guy goes to the brothel equivalent of the Star Wars cantina scene. Hey, are you somebody with a Minnie Mouse latex fetish? Well, this is the place for you. In fact, I think they have something for every fetish you can think of here. And probably a lot that you didn't think of. I can't really show a lot of this part, but uh, check out the chairs they have at this place. Here's a hint. That wasn't lemonade shooting out of there. Ugh, please tell me round the corner fudge isn't made. Fun fact, apparently this part was inspired by a real bar the director went to in Thailand, which begs the question, what the fuck are bars in Thailand like? And dude, this is the last place I would get a hooker. You're just asking for trouble. <laughs> See, told ya. <laughs> Okay, listen, man, you just got your dick bitten off. I don't know if a drill is that scary in comparison. And if you thought the engineers have been weird so far, just wait until you see what happens when this girl gets shot in half. <laughs> eh, I'd still smash. I would probably make sure to wear some protection, though. <laughs> well, looks like the key man's about to turn this guy into an engineer. See if you can guess what his special mutation's gonna be. Yeah, he's been equipped with an anti-Asian stereotype cannon. All right, I know I already said this movie is like if Cronenberg directed Robocop, but here's another comparison. It's like one of Lucio Fulci's nightmares after eating some bad gas station sushi. See, look, eyeball torture. Meanwhile, Ruka's still busy looking for the key man. Hmm, let's see, William R. Keeman. I wonder if this is him. At this point, the key man explains his origin. Turns out he made a danger diabolic comic or something. Okay, actually his dad was a sniper for the police and he was the one ordered to kill Ruka's dad because he didn't want the cops to be privatized. But then his dad was killed by the current police chief. So then he injected himself with the DNA from various serial killers and became the first engineer. Damn, this is like they condensed an entire separate movie into one flashback. Oh, and I also think he made a deal with the devil or... Mickey Rooney? I don't know, one of them. The point is the police chief is actually the real villain, which makes about as much sense as anything else in this movie. So are Ruka and the key man gonna team up and avenge their fathers? Okay, I guess not. So yeah, just like that, the main villain that's been built up the whole movie is done, and all of a sudden the chief is the new bad guy. I gotta admit, for a movie full of weird, whacked out shit, I did not see that coming. Ruka better hurry up and get the chief. By the looks of it, the cops are in the middle of a big shaky cam raid. This is what you get for not using a tripod, asshole. <laughs> hmm, you know, I'm beginning to think these cops might be a little corrupt. God, there's so much shit happening, I'm having trouble keeping up. Now some chick in a samurai stewardess cosplay is fighting the world's cutest Resident Evil monster? This is like if Zack Snyder's Sucker Punch had an R rating and a fraction of the budget. Oh, and, uh, Chief, I'd be careful about getting a beej in this movie. Things could go really bad for you. But despite all the crazy shit happening, you know the one thing this movie's missing? <laughs> That's right, acid tits. In fact, you know what? Pretty much every movie's missing that. Oh no, the cops even go after bartender lady. And those assholes didn't tip her either. Can Ruka get to her in time? Nope, she sure can't. Well, that's it, fellas. You just pissed off the wrong super killer mutant bitch. <laughs> Also, it might seem weird to question anything in this movie, but, uh, why is there a conehead wearing blackface? Anybody gonna answer that? No? Okay. Not only does Ruka have a new monster arm, but she's got some other tricks up her sleeve, too. Oh! 
<laughs> Anatoa Shurio Shimasta. Fucker. All right, time for Ruka to kill the chief and avenge your father's death. Plus, you know, these cops should probably be stopped. Hashtag defund Japan. Okay, so far we have had peeing chairs, alligator pussies, and acid tits. So what crazy thing is the movie gonna show us now? Ah, the Nerf fist gun. Very nice. Damn, Ruka's in trouble. If this guy breaks out the wet willy ammo, she's done for. He makes a big mistake, though, trying to give her the finger. Thanks to a bit of Ruka's ingenuity, the bird's about to flip him. We're not at the end, there's still 15 minutes left. For example, Ruka still needs to beat the movie's final boss, who I thought was gonna be this guy, but apparently not. First though, she's gotta beat the sub-boss, and I'm not just saying that because this thing looks like a BDSM nightmare. Hmm, let's see, do I reference a Marilyn Manson video or a Silent Hill game here? Eh, fuck it, I'll go with a Tool video reference. Even though we've mostly seen some pretty memorable practical effects so far, this is where the movie decides to bust out its CGI budget. Honestly though, I've seen a lot of worse. And that includes in movies with much bigger budgets. Alright, Ruka disarmed and dislegged her. Now prepare to be dislifed, bitch. Bad news though, the chief brought some reanimator juice with him, and I think he's about to pull a warden from Story of Ricky and Hulk out on Ruka. Oh, wait, he stays the same? That's a little anticlimactic. But wait, what am I saying? With how over the top the movie's been so far, they can't just end with a simple sword fight. This movie has got to pull something really crazy out of its ass at the end. Possibly by pulling something out of a character's ass. Ruka cuts the chief's legs off, and then... Okay, you know what? I owe Godzilla vs. Hedera an apology. Out of all the crazy, implausible shit that can fly in Japan, Godzilla doing it is actually pretty low on the silly scale. Tch. <laughs> and to think the Chief's doctor said he needed to reduce his blood pressure. Who's gotta eat less salt now, Doc? And I guess it's fitting that the way Ruka kills him lets me do one of my running gags. <laughs> There, now that she's got her revenge, all Ruka needs to do now is find a good plastic surgeon. She even gives Gimp Lady some new gun attachments. I told you this movie was Robert Rodriguez's wet dream. Oh, and there's also a mid credit scene revealing that the Key Man is actually still alive. Now, this is probably just here to set up Tokyo Gore Avengers. Well, here's one movie that definitely lives up to its title. It was in Tokyo, there's police, and oh boy was it gory. If you made it to the end of this video, I think it goes without saying that this movie is not for everybody. In fact, it's probably not for most people. But if you're a fan of weird and extreme cinema, there is some fun to be had here. Despite the obviously low budget, the gore effects are plentiful, and the whole thing is memorably twisted and bizarre. The biggest thing going against it is that at about an hour and 50 minutes, the movie's about 20 minutes longer than it should be. Movies like this really should clock in at under an hour and a half, and by the end all the blood sprays can get a little tiring. But I'll tell you this, you probably won't forget parts of it anytime soon. Well, that's enough fake blood for now. Next episode I think I'll do something a little more wholesome, like a Bigfoot slasher movie. Until next time! <laughs> <laughs>